Good morning, children. This is the second of our five lessons on modal verbs. Again, you'll need with you today a book and a pen or a pencil. And again, you might want to listen for the challenge of do I make a mistake in this activity or not? If you hear the, ch the mistake that I make, please email it to me. But beware, I might not make one. So be careful. If you remember from yesterday, modal verbs are a type of auxiliary verb. That means they have to work with another verb for them to make sense. And sometimes those modal verbs are used to help us show possibility. And sometimes those modal verbs are used to help us show certainty. So modal verbs show possibility or certainty. Sometimes that's described as degrees of possibility. These are the modal verbs we looked at yesterday. They're not all the modal verbs, but they're some of them. Today, we're going to look at what happens when we want to say the negative of something. So instead of saying I should do something, if I don't want to do it or I don't think that I should do it, I might say I should not. Let's have a look at the verbs again, just remind ourselves of the verbs that show certainty, modal verbs for certainty. Let's have a quick look. Might, now possibility, should, possibility, would, possibility, must, show certainty, will, show certainty, can, show certainty. And the last one over here, shall, shows these degrees of certainty. So we're going to look at the negative form of our modal verbs today. So the standard way of recording the negative form is that we write the word not after it. Must, must not. Might, might not. Should, should not. Would, would not. Will, will not. Can, cannot. And if you notice, this is an unusual form because the can and the not have been put together to make one single word. All the others are two separate words, but this is one single word. Could, could not, shall, shall not, may, may not. And there's an interesting one here. This is a really old fashioned modal verb, ought. You ought to do something. It's something that you really should do. Ought to or ought not. Often, however, we don't see the modal verbs looking like this in their negative form, we see them in their contracted form where we've made, we've removed a vowel to make an, an included an apostrophe. Now these red ones are just a standard way of making the contracted form and if you remember the contracted form is where we swap the vowel for an apostrophe. So must not, mustn't, should not, shouldn't, would not, wouldn't, could not, couldn't, ought not, oughtn't. When we look at will not, we don't say willn't, we say won't. So it's a total change. And cannot, we say can't, but you'll notice here we've got one n and in the standard form there are two n's and then shall not we don't say shallant we say shan't now these two i've included in yellow they do follow the take out the vowel form however we don't often hear mightn't and mayn't they're very old-fashioned forms of saying the negative form okay so let's have a go. Here are some modal verbs. In a minute, you're going to pause the video and have a go at writing down the contracted negative form of each of these verbs. The contracted negative form. So if I give you an example. So instead of saying should, I would write shouldn't. The contracted negative form. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, so 
you've had a go at writing a contracted negative form, let's have a look and see how you got on. So, might becomes mightn't, should becomes shouldn't, would becomes wouldn't, must becomes mustn't, will becomes won't, can becomes can't, may becomes mayn't, could becomes couldn't, and shall becomes shan't. Well done if you got those. Here's a challenge. We're going to look for modal verbs. So the instruction is to read this short text and write down all of the modal verbs. So in a minute, I'm going to reveal the text. I'm going to pause the video and write down all of the modal verbs that you can see. Remember to look for the tiny ones. Remember to look for positive and for ne negative. Off you go. OK, so before I do this activity, I think I'm going to read it first. In order to go into space, astronauts must wear protective equipment. This should be worn at all times when out of the spacecraft. There may be times when astronauts are required to wear protective equipment inside the spacecraft. This is because there could be changes in the level of oxygen in the craft. Most people might think being an astronaut would be exciting, but it mightn't be if anything goes wrong. Because of this, people shouldn't underestimate what a highly skilled job it is. Now, first thing here is, I've noticed there's a typo there, so let's take that out. And now I'm going to look for the modal verbs. In order to go into space, astronauts, they can wear protective equipment, they must wear protective equipment. This should be worn at all times when out of the spacecraft. There may be times when astronauts are required, required to wear protective equipment inside the spacecraft. This is because there could be changes in the level of oxygen in the craft. Most people might think being an astronaut would be exciting, but it mightn't be if anything goes wrong. Because of this, people shouldn't underestimate what a highly skilled job it is. Well done if you got those. Now our next activities are going to require you to jot things down as we go along, so make sure you've got your paper ready. We've got two challenges here. We need to circle the modal verbs in each of these boxes. So let's look at the first one. It says walk, climb, must. Jot down which is the modal verb in this group of three verbs and then do the same for the second one. OK, let's see if you got them. Must is the modal verb here and could is the modal verb here. I hope you got those. I'm going to leave you to do the next one so you can pause the video, read the next one, pause the video and have a go. OK, how did you get on? It says underline the modal verb in the sentence below. We might go to the cinema tomorrow going to go to the cinema we might go to the cinema tomorrow and then it says underline the motor verb in the sentence below you can sleep at my house tonight when you're going to sleep at somebody's house you can sleep at my house tonight again i'm going to let you read the next one pause the video and have a go OK, it says which sentence tells you that snow is certain? So I'm looking for modal verbs of certainty. A, it might snow later today. Might, so that means it might, it might not. B, it will snow later today. 
there's my modal verb for certainty. So the sentence was B. Let's look at this one. It says, which sentence tells you that rain is possible? Let's read it. A. It may rain at the weekend. B. It will rain at the weekend. Well, I know that will shows certainty and may shows possibility. So this is the sentence showing that rain is possible. One more again, you're going to pause the video, read it and have a go first. OK, it says, fill the gap with the modal verb, which shows that seeing a doctor is the best choice. Mark something, go see a doctor. Mark may go to see a doctor. Mark should go to see a doctor. Well, they both show possibility, but it says seeing a doctor is the best choice. May or should? I think it's should. Mark should go and see a doctor. It's the better choice. And 4B says fill the gap with the modal verb, which shows that Yusuf promises to come to the party. I something be at the party, said Yusuf. He's promising to be at the party. I shall be at the party, said Yusuf. I might be at the party. While might is a greater degree of possibility, I think we need to put in there shall. I shall be at the party. OK, now this is your final activity for this morning. Your job is to take two pages from your reading book. Just open your reading book on the last two pages that you were reading. If you haven't got a reading book nearby, you can use a magazine or a newspaper or even an advert. And your job is to read through and tally whether you can find any of these modal verbs. You might want to make your tally chart bigger than mine and include more of the modal verbs. Every time you see one of these on the page, you need to tally in your boxes. And remember, five is always shown like this. Give it a go and let me know how many modal verbs you find. So today we've looked at modal verbs and modal, modal verbs for negative forms. We've also looked at the contracted way of writing the modal verbs for negative forms because that's what we usually see. We also had a go at practicing writing them and finding modal verbs in a text. Tomorrow we'll look at modal verbs again.